The thing is that this style doesn't just repel men, it also repels women because we don't want to be friends with someone that looks like this because these people look like they'll start World War III if they get misgendered. They don't want to be friends with you. You, you don't got to worry about that, trust me. Hey everybody, today I'm going to be responding to a video called Why Does Gen Z Want to Be Ugly? from YouTuber Misha Petrov. It's linked below so you can go give it a watch to make sure I'm not misrepresenting any of her points. So in this video, Misha raises a number of points in support of her thesis that Gen Z wants to be, as the title says, ugly. Before we even get into the video though, we might want to ask, what does Misha mean when she says ugly? It's a pretty subjective term, right? While she doesn't explicitly define it in this video, I think we can get a feel for what she means by watching the intro. So let's do that. The patriarchy. Hey guys, it's Misha and welcome back to my channel. So something I think we've all noticed by now is that there's a certain look to these woke social justice warriors, certain clothing and hair and makeup, and there's a reason that we have this stereotype of a blue hair feminist, because a lot of them do look like that. This is what the patriarchy looks like. Men? Women. There's a reason that we have this stereotype about blue-haired feminists. They always have that woke blue hair, like this person who has blue hair, or this person who also has blue hair, or, or this one, or, or this one, right? Here. Okay, but Misha starts the video by playing a number of TikTok clips of what she calls woke social justice warriors who have some combination of dyed short hair, piercings, tattoos, and so on. From these examples and this explanation, I think we can derive that when Misha uses the word ugly, she means weird or different. Not like her, you could say, seeing as she has none of the features in question. Let's continue though and see where she's taking this. And today I want to explore why that may be, because in the beginning I thought, you know, these people just want attention, they want to look unique, or they might be looking for a fight even, which happens a lot. <laughs> It's those damn blue-haired feminists again, always yelling and screaming and having brown hair. <laughs> okay, but Misha starts off by talking about Gen Z women who have begun rejecting the male gaze. And that is definitely part of it, but I think there's something else going on, and I've heard a lot of young women in Gen Z especially talk about this, and that is the attempt to move away from the male gaze, which in feminist theory is when males tend to objectify women, and so it's oppressive. So these women want to move away from that and change their style so that it's not what men typically find attractive. Active. Ladies, I'm going to show you exactly how to repel men with makeup. If you're looking for outfits to repel men, you've stumbled on the right video. We're going to start off with a pair of black trousers with quite a low crotch area. This is just to let them know that we do in fact have bigger balls than they do. I hope you repel many men today. Misha has discovered a contradiction here, however, that by centering your look around a rejection of the male gaze, you're still ultimately making your decision about men and allowing the male gaze to dictate your self-expression. But I do find this funny because the point that they're trying to make is that we should dress for ourselves, right? Wear what you like, wear what makes you comfortable, what makes you happy, and not think about men. Yet the focus here is on men. There are women, of course, who will wear, you know, six inch heels that they're not comfortable in, they don't really want to wear, but they're doing it for men, right? To appease the male gaze, or they do something specific with their hair or makeup or whatever, not for themselves, but for men. In this case, you have girls and young women, you know, getting body modifications or tattoos or piercings or doing something specific with their hair, tends to be dyeing it pink or blue or purple, um, or shaving it all off, just because that's what they're told will repel men. You're doing your part as a modern day feminist. So they're still failing to dress for themselves and the focus is still on men. They're worrying about whether or not some man will like it. Misha's point here relies on an assumption though that both groups of women are failing to dress for themselves. And my first question here is, you know, how would she know that? How would she know the internal reasons why these women might be doing this? Who's to say that women who both adhere to and reject these standards aren't able to do so for themselves because they want to, you know? Her point relays a certain bias that totally centers the male gaze. According to Misha, if you wear high heels and dresses, regardless of your intent, you're dressing for the male gaze. If you shave your head, wear baggy clothes, and get tattoos, then you're dressing to spite the male gaze. So how then are women supposed to dress? 
dress outside of this gaze. What qualifies as dressing for yourself if however you decide to dress is ultimately viewed as a decision made outside of yourself? Women aren't left with many options here, right? Misha's framing there at the end that the women making these videos are just doing their part as modern day feminists. You're doing your part as a modern day feminist. It's interesting, I think, because this framing represents a denial of agency. Women rejecting these norms aren't doing so for themselves. No, they are doing so for some collective feminist project. Furthering the ideology of feminism is what drives them and not their own autonomy to decide how to present and who this presentation is for. It's essentially saying that the only reason someone might want to be different than me or ugly as is defined in this video is because they're brainwashed by feminism and not because, you know, they want to be. And that sucks, you know, I think that kind of sucks and I think it's a bad and weird point to make. So let's move on to the next point she brings up, which centers around the topic of body hair. And there is, of course, the body hair movement, which, listen, I don't think it's a big deal. If you don't want to shave, don't shave. If you want to shave, shave. But they think that it's brave and empowering to show off their body hair, you know, their armpits or their legs, and they'll post it anywhere but on their head, of course. Call it a little quirk, if you will. I have hair in my armpits. I have it there for a few reasons. One, lazy. Two, f the patriarchy. And three, your response to them tells me everything I need to know. And then they get applauded for it. They even expect likes and comments from all these other girls, you know, saying that they are stunning and brave for having body hair, for not shaving. But then they also get really upset when men don't want to date them because they may have a preference. But if they have that preference, then that's misogynistic, of course. Which is silly. Women have preferences too. Some women don't like men with beards, for example. That's fine. But when men have preferences with body hair or facial hair or whatever, that's a problem. The first thing I'd like to address here is there is the way that Misha has chosen to frame the reception these Zoomers get online. When they post these videos, she says, they get applauded for it. They expect likes and comments from all these other girls saying that they are stunning and brave for having body hair. And is that what's happening? Well, sure. The comments on this video are positive and encouraging. The commenters are supportive of them showing their body hair in this content. That's the case for many of these videos. And this is a good thing. It is good that social media has allowed spaces to develop that are welcoming and open to conversations about feminism and the different ways that bodily autonomy can be reclaimed, like for example, uh, not shaving. However, what Misha's leaving out here is the inevitable negative reaction that content like this receives. And there's plenty of that. Gen Z gals on growing out their body hair. It's sexy and empowering. <laughs> like these pictures are just horrifying. I'm trying to normalize this. What we do not need we don't need to normalize that. We really don't. Nope, if dudes are expected to be almost perfect to even get a date, the least you can do is properly groom yourself. Yeah. Yes. Female body hair is disgusting. I don't believe that there is one man on this earth that finds, you know, hairy underarms attractive. Not one at all. and then they get applauded for it. Even on the video she linked, a video with just 20 comments, Alex here has decided to call uh, them musty. It's not all encouragement and smiles in the comment sections. I like their response here though. It works, y'all. That's, that's good, that's funny. So are these people just having preferences or are they openly expressing their disgust for women that have body hair and shaming them for that body hair in a way that they would never do to men? It's the latter, it's the latter. It's the latter. The last thing I want to bring up with this body hair point is, is how Misha loves to make people up. Misha loves conjuring woke feminists out of thin air and then laughing at how stupid they are. For anyone who's seen this brand of anti-SJW content before, this should be familiar territory, but it's worth acknowledging nonetheless. Misha fails to give a single example of these feminists that are both rejecting body hair norms and also complaining about not getting dates. The clips she plays actually show the opposite of that. The people rejecting body body hair norms are explicitly stating that they do not want dates from men who will shame them for this decision. Best man repellent, raising my arms when my views get low because I know men won't be able to resist commenting razor emojis, which will boost my algorithm nicely. Your reaction to my body hair tells me everything I need to know about you. They clearly have no interest in these judgmental men, right? So this idea that they're uh, bitter is completely made up. Misha just 
made it up. And so what are we left with here? Well, someone who says they don't care if you have body hair, do you, but then gives a one-sided argument using examples that she has to make up as to why you definitely probably shouldn't because you'll end up single and mad or whatever. But again, I don't think there's anything wrong with these women saying that they don't shave because a lot of women are expected to shave like every single inch of their body. I'm just not convinced that a majority of these women are doing it for themselves because it's not considered stereotypically feminine. She doesn't care if you have body hair. Oh no, she's just not convinced that you you're doing it for yourself because having body hair goes against the norm. And the only reason you'd wanna go against the norm is for likes and follows on TikTok. Which again, leaves us with the question of how are women supposed to have autonomy when whatever they choose isn't actually their choice? The unspoken answer here from Misha is that they aren't, they're not allowed. They are, you know, she doesn't care, but also, you know, they, mm, they aren't. All right, next point. Now, of course, these trends are always changing and I do believe that freedom of expression is important, but I do have two points that I want to discuss. And the first one is when these uh, people from Gen Z, they'll post this and they'll say, well, this is so unfair that I can't find work, right? This is my style and I should be able to find a job, but it's really difficult. But there are things that are expected of you at the workplace. And one of those things is being dressed appropriately for both men and women, whether that's, you know, wearing a suit and a tie or a clean dress shirt. Instead, they want to look like a teen going through some emo phase and then they're confused why employers won't hire them. You have to be professional. Otherwise, the workplace would look like a circus. Usually when you hear an argument like this, it's sliding out of the decaying mouth of a 1000 year old man. How you planning on get a jerk? with all that crap on your face and those damned Abraham Crombie ripped jeans. Good old fashioned grandpa conservatism this is. Repurposed through a new hip brand of pseudo-centrist influencer anti-wokeness. Continuing on her path of inventing people to get mad at though, Misha references Zoomers that, as far as we can tell from her video, do not exist. Who is complaining all the time about not getting hired while also insisting that they continue to look weird and wild? Can we have a single example? Just one itty bitty little source as a Anytime a creator puts forth claims like this, a good habit to get into is to start by asking, you know, who is it that they're talking about and what are the people they're talking about actually saying? If you can't make it past that first hurdle of identifying the people whose viewpoints you're supposed to be accurately representing, then you're not off to a great start. The important thing here though, is that Misha wants you to know that she believes freedom of expression is important. And I do believe that freedom of expression is important. However, crucially, that freedom only extends as far as the dress code at your workplace allows. There are expectations at the workplace, and the moment you defy those expectations, well, tough luck. Expressing yourself in a way that your boss doesn't like is just you going through an emo teenager phase. Instead, they want to look like a teen going through some emo phase. Don't complain about not getting hired when all you had to do was stop looking weird and, you know, ugly. Of course it's true that many workplaces might not hire you if your appearance deviates too far from the norm with tattoos and piercings and so on. After double checking this, it's actually pretty dependent on the job. White collar jobs, for example, still tend to have these norms in place, but they did a survey of about 2000 workers recently and there was no negative correlations between having tattoos and employment. There was even a slightly positive correlation with men. So that's just kind of something to take into account. But if we do care about freedom of expression as Misha herself claims to, then isn't that something we should want to change? The implied answer here is that no, we shouldn't because much like gravity, getting fired for having purple hair and a septum piercing is a fixed, unchanging law of the universe. The next part of her video dips into some pretty clear cut transphobia. So if you're not interested in seeing that, skip to the timestamp on the screen now. So the next point Misha makes here is that this style of expression, the ugly one, is linked to what she calls gender ideology, which is what she uses to refer to trans and non-binary people. And the other point is that this style is unlike the, let's say, goth or emo teens expressing themselves because this style has a lot of connection to specifically gender ideology. Here is a non-binary fashion tip that is not going to be for everyone. Get down with dressing weird. Pro tip for trans women. Uh, get a f***ing face tattoo because this shit cured my f***ing dysphoria. When I look this f***ing cool, bro, f you betcha. Are you with Embo? 
Now, before I play the rest of the clip, I want to briefly interject here. Misha uses the phrase gender ideology. It must be made absolutely clear that this phrase is a transphobic dog whistle. It is used to reduce the existence of trans people down to being the product of an ideology, an ideology that one is ascribed to and also that one can be indoctrinated into. This is a common anti-trans rhetorical trick. You see this from anti-trans activists all the time, from TERFs to genocidal fascists. There can be no middle way in dealing with transgenderism. Which are often, you know, not mutually exclusive groups. And that means reducing or keeping down the number of people who transition. Every one of those people is someone who needs special accommodation, but every one of them is a difficulty. Transness to them is not a valid state of being. It is the product of an ideology. And for those who tend to use gender ideology in this way, that ideology must be eradicated. Transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. Every one of them is a difficulty. Just a note there on some terminology, but let's let Misha continue. So someone will post this style and get a bunch of comments saying, you look great, I love how you look non-binary, right? You have that look to you. And then they start out, you know, as a tomboy or feminine man, you check back a few months later and they're getting top surgery, irreversible surgery, because they get all these comments saying you look amazing. And then they get pushed into that direction of getting surgery. I definitely felt the same way. often convinced by these comments that if they like to dress this way, they are non-binary. And then especially the young teenage girls will go get top surgery and then they'll get applauded for that. So according to Misha, being ugly online and gender ideology are not only linked, but there is a causal relationship. Non-conforming self-expression leads to validation on the internet, which leads to young people being convinced to become trans and getting gender affirming surgeries. What Misha's talking about here is called rapid onset gender dysphoria. This is the argument that peer influence and social contagion are causing gender dysphoria and in turn making people trans when they might not have been without that peer influence. The peer influence in question here is those TikTok comments that Misha forgot to show us for some reason. Now, there is no credible evidence to support the concept of rapid onset gender dysphoria. The term originates from a 2018 study that cited online surveys of parents from three anti-trans websites, most of whom already did not approve of their children's transitions. The children themselves were not a part of the surveys at all. In the scientific community, the study has been heavily scrutinized. The term it put forth, rapid rapid onset gender dysphoria is not recognized by any major medical associations. In fact, its use has been discouraged by most of them, including the American Psychological Association, the American Psychiatric Association, the World Professional Association for Transgender Health, and others. But that didn't stop the right-wing media from running wild with this narrative. With books and massive media coverage, they take anecdotes and singular instances of things like people detransitioning or online communities of trans people in order to fearmonger about the trans trans epidemic. Misha's version of this fear-mongering is the social capital argument that these Zoomers will be applauded online for transitioning and that is the main reason they do it. Not because, you know, they're actually trans. And there's just no evidence that this is what's taking place. What there is plenty of evidence for, though, is that if you do get top surgery and talk about it online, the transphobic media landscape will call you a freak or a Nazi science experiment. One of the beavers on Blue's Clues has had a top surgery, but apparently beavers trans themselves. Now, I have a, a little secret for you. Beavers don't actually do that. That's not a thing. According to everybody who makes children's TV these days, it is necessary to push trans on the kids. Or in Misha's case, just say you're doing irreversible damage to yourself for likes on TikTok. And so by her logic, this should be reason enough to discourage social transitions like this if the motivation is purely external. But she's decided to leave all of that out of her argument, which is certainly a choice. Young people discovering through social media the language and terminology that they need to adequately express their gender identity, that's a good thing. It is a good thing that spaces have developed to grant people agency to better learn and understand these things. The left-handedness graph is a good place to go here, where before a certain point in history, being left-handed was a rare occurrence because it meant that you were a demon or a witch or whatever. And then once the strict norms around this changed and left-handedness stopped being suppressed, the percentage of left left-handed people grew and eventually evened out at where we see it today. We are currently in a period of growing cultural consciousness about trans people, so this part of the left-hand graph, and at some point that percentage will even out, or maybe it won't.
Okay, so the next section is a bit of a deviation from the topic of the video, but still worth addressing, I think. Now, back to the whole male gaze, there are actually women who are now calling men predators if they want to date a woman from a different country. Why do you think so many men are traveling overseas to find wives in other countries? In other cultures, a lot of women are more submissive. Yeah, they're pervy. Men husbands? are traveling overseas to, to countries that have less money and less education. It's because they want a woman who is dependent on... Yes, we're aware why you guys go and get foreign girls because you can't handle women that's why and this whole thing is so offensive and ignorant because basically what they're saying is that if a woman is not from the US and she's not woke, then she is uneducated, she doesn't have opinions of her own, and she can't be outspoken, and that's why men go for her. So the Western women think they are superior because they are empowered and awake, right? It's the women from other countries who are educated and can be just as outspoken and have opinions and actually can still look normal, which a lot of people here in the US seem to struggle with. So can you blame men if they choose to try and find a woman from a different country? Breaking, the worst person you know is correct, but not for the reasons she thinks. So definitely based on the clip she showed, specifically the one where the TikToker insinuates that women in Eastern countries are not real women, but girls. Because you can't handle women. There is some white Western superiority feminism going on. I do agree that this perspective infantilizes women outside of North America and Western Europe and denies them agency in these arrangements with Western men. With that said, though, the loudest advocates for passport bro-ism, who go elsewhere looking for women, they're doing so for a reason, and most of the time, that reason could hardly be described as liberation. Get a little bit of money, get on a plane, fly to South America, find a girlfriend, have a child, fly back to America. When she says she wants to move to America, say no, work, Go visit, be a family man when you can be a family man. Do not face the fear of divorce rate. Keep your freedom, live your good life, have your genetic progeny and be fine without worrying about losing the house, getting destroyed financially and paying all your money away in child support. It's called passport bros. It's very big in the black community, apparently, very big. And a lot of black men, they're leaving in droves for other countries because in their eyes, black women are very combative, very masculine, talk down to them, berate them, make them feel less than. These men are not looking for women who are going to be outspoken or have opinions. No, they are explicit in their preference for traditional wives who will not speak. They're looking for wives who have little to no financial or legal autonomy. They seek these women out precisely for the stereotype that they are submissive. Of course, these women can be outspoken and have opinions, obviously so. But many of these men seek arrangements that are predicated on them not doing those things or not looking for employment or hobbies outside of the home, even if they might want to, because that goes against the role of a traditional wife. I know like a large contingent of men who say it's not even worth speaking to Western women. Like you guys it's not even like you exist. We just shouldn't even think of Western women as real because it's just too masculine, too career oriented. Why waste your time? Why have a headache involving yourself in that? The criticism of the passport bro is meant to target this desire for a power imbalance, the patriarchal domination that these men want over women as the basis for a relationship. We can criticize that without denying the autonomy of the woman in question, but some of the feminists she's shown, at least one of them have done just that. So half a point to Misha here for recognizing the Western centric ignorance on display here. We Stan, an intersectional feminist queen, the half point deduction there is because she still managed to somehow make this about wokeness. The thing is that this style doesn't just repel men, it also repels women because we don't want to be friends with someone that looks like this because these people look like they'll start World War III if they get misgendered. They don't want to be friends with you. You you don't got to worry about that, trust me. Demi Lovato, for example, or Sam Smith and their whole transformation, and they have this ugly style on the outside, but they are often ugly on the inside as well, much like all woke individuals who are narcissistic and miserable. <laughs> The screaming clips there continue for another 30 seconds. It's a good bit. It's very funny. It's good comedy. It's very much not something taken straight out of a 2014 YouTube video. Okay, but for this one, Misha has abandoned all semblance of trying to make a single point and just started full on preaching to the choir. I don't need to respond to it because there's nothing to respond to here. She says, woke people are narcissistic, miserable, ugly, inside and out. Case in point, Sam Smith and Demi Lovato. And that's it. No reasoning, explanation, or justification. The only way you'd still be able to take her video seriously at this point is if you are either 
A, already fully indoctrinated into the anti-woke mind virus, or B, you're just not really paying attention. Sadly though, this audience seems perfectly willing to gargle down this slop. And this is just one more example of why media literacy is important, but also uh, in many ways, dying, many such cases. I miss the old days when dressing alternatively was because you were fun and interesting and not because you hated your dad. Dressing alt has famously never been about hating your dad. That started in 2012 when all these kids started thirst trapping on LinkedIn or whatever. Repel men? Don't worry, her personality is spectacular at repelling us and I love how they're still living their lives centering me in their behavior. The sheer audacity of Brian here thinking that any of the people in this video would ever give a single solitary Terry fuck about him. They don't, don't worry. They don't even know who you are. And if they did, they would wish that they didn't. This is a real eye-opening video and this needed to be said, shown. Men can definitely handle women. We just want one who will bring us peace in our lives, not war and conflict. Men and women are indeed complementary. yet the feminists try to ignore this. Quit bitching about me taking out the trash, honey. Please, I don't need this kind of war and conflict in my life. All right, now let's watch Misha's conclusion here. A while ago, we had this beauty pageant. It was born male and won. Maybe they have an amazing personality. Maybe they're really funny and an awesome person, but this is a beauty pageant. We are lying to ourselves and to other people. All throughout history, we can recognize real beauty. If someone from the past or someone from the future came to this phase and this trend of the social justice warriors looking like this, I seriously doubt that most of them will agree, yes, this is beautiful. And I know that they do this to try and express their inner turmoil or what they're feeling inside, but this says nothing about who you are. It's just a distraction. The only thing that this tells me is to try and keep magnets away from your face or that I have to walk on eggshells around you because you might have a temper tantrum about your gender identity. So again, I think it's a great thing for men and women to be able to express themselves through fashion, but this feels like they're just trying to be unique while at the same time looking like copies of each other. Just copy and paste this one non-binary woke Gen Z person and then you'll have this army of them on TikTok. Misha says that all throughout history, we've been able to recognize real beauty. Couple questions there. Who is we and what qualifies as real? The features that Misha considers to be ugly have been represented across cultures, locations, and time. The standards around appearance have been ever changing. She shows these two images in her definition of objective beauty. And I don't know if that's supposed to be sarcastic or what, like if she thinks these are true beauty or not. But if she does think they're beautiful, that's fine, you know, but it directly contradicts her point here. What she actually means when she says that we can recognize true beauty is that her definition is the one that should be recognized. It is fixed, unchanging, and the only reason one might want to stray from it is to spite their parents or fit in with the trans crowd, to be different solely for the sake of being different. It's impossible that doing this could be done for yourself because why would you want to be ugly? Why would you want Misha to think that you're ugly? That's so selfish. Of you. Misha, throughout this video, makes it clear that you can express yourself how you like, unless, of course, that expression includes dyed hair, a shaved head, piercings, tattoos, anything a trans person might do, body hair that keeps you single and sad, anything your employer might fire you for, looking like this, looking like this, looking like this, or looking like this. As long as you make sure to not do any of those things, then Misha won't think that you're ugly. And isn't that just great. Okay, that's it, everybody. Let me know what you thought of the video below. Thanks again to my patrons for sponsoring this video. Was my video here a proportional response to the source material? Did Misha's video need this sort of breaking down? Maybe not. But when it comes to this kind of thinly veiled bigotry, why not go all out? You know, that's, that's just my rationale anyways. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Whatever. Uh, bye bye. See you guys later. Bye. <laughs>